at thy word, O Lord, is a program designed to enable you study the Bible. It teaches the scripture and leads you to deeper understanding of contemporary events in the light of Christian faith. At thy word, O Lord, is designed for people of Catholic faith and Christians who seek true studies and interpretation of sacred scripture. At thy word, O Lord, an initiative of Reverend Monsignor Dr. Pius Key holds monthly at Holy Rosary Chaplaincy, Rimi Bekwe, Pat Be a part of this great opportunity to share the word of God. Vatican one era, you had several altars stationed in different parts of the church. Today, you no longer see those altars. And someone might wonder, but so why did they remove those altars? Did they make a mistake? No, they didn't. In the Catholic church, you still have more than one altar. You see, have more than one altar. The number one altar that you have is right up there. That altar is united with this one. Then there is the altar of the word of God. So how many altars are you having now? Then you have the altar of praise. Which is the ministry of the choir. You have four altars. All of them are rolled together as one. And that is why everything that takes place on each of these altars must be taken very, very seriously. That is why ministers who serve these altars, they must be very, very careful the way they present themselves. Because in the Old Testament, for any minister of the altar to make sacrifice, that minister must be pure. That minister must be pure. So for the ministers of music, it is not enough for ministers of music to just show up and say, I'm in the choir. You just run and put on your uniform and say you are ready to sing. Are you prepared? Because you are getting involved in serious business. And what you are doing on that altar has devastating effect on the kingdom of darkness. And Satan is going to remember what you did. 
Those who are lectors, are they spiritually prepared to exercise the office of lector? Or do you think it's enough for you to just know how to speak good English and to read well for you to be a lector? You can get killed. You can get killed. Because Satan doesn't joke around. Or the priest who is ministering at the altar. The priest enjoys a certain kind of immunity because he is ordained into Christ. And when he's fulfilling that office, it's actually Christ who is working in him. And because of the lifestyle of the prayer of priests, if you look through the prayer book of priests, the liturgy of the hours that priests use, it is all psalms and canticles. They are all, almost all of them are praises, thanksgiving, and repentance so whether the priest prays in the morning in the afternoon at night he's celebrating the mass he's constantly making act of repentance that is why it's very difficult for satan to touch him but how about you are you preparing yourself spiritually are you in good spiritual shape to approach your ministry Anything that has to do with the altar is sacred. It's sacred. So the altar, a righteous altar, a godly altar, is a place of worship. A godly altar is a place of worship. Where sacrifices are brought and offered by men to the almighty God. The altar is a meeting place between God and human beings. It's a meeting place. The altar is a gate, is a gateway into the spiritual realm. This is a gateway. It's as if when you approach the altar, the, you are passing into another world. You are entering to a spiritual realm. The altar is also a place of divine revelation. At the altar, God reveals himself more fully. He makes himself more fully available to human beings. The altar is a place where covenants are made and covenants are renewed. That is why you hear over and over again during the sacrifice of the mass the priest reciting the words of Jesus saying this is the, the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant once he pronounces those words and you partake of what comes from that altar you have entered into covenant you have renewed covenant and that is why it is very difficult for Satan to tackle people who frequent Holy Communion. Because as you are receiving the food that comes from that altar, as you are receiving it, you are renewing covenant with God. And for Satan to be able to attack you successfully, he wants you to be out of covenant with God. In 1 Peter chapter 5, the Bible tells us, it says, Your enemy, the devil, is prowling round like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. When he comes after you, the first thing he wants to do is to get you away from the fellowship. And once he succeeds in doing that, he goes after your vocal cords, your vocal abilities cuts off the power of praise and prayer. Because praise and prayer is what keeps you spiritually alive. So when you find a believer who even in the midst of so much praise and worship going on 
and you find a person standing like that seemingly unconcerned know that that person is in trouble that person is already in deep trouble satan has that person's number already you can see that thank you satan has that person's number already you see some people in church the whole church is praising god worshiping god and for them it's like you are disturbing me when people are around them are praising they they, they want to give you your space say i beg i beg Mukuna, no, do your own thing for them no 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 just mash me or mind your hand you don't need to look far start praying for that person because satan has the person's number dialed satan will cut off the person's ability because satan knows that praise praise will get god to answer to your situation prayer we get god to respond through the ministry of angels or other human beings who can get to you but once he can cut that off nobody will come to your help the altar is a significant place it's a place where covenants are made a place where covenants are renewed the altar is a place of communication where god speaks to human beings after abraham made sacrifice made covenant with god he fell asleep and while he was sleeping god started speaking to him you heard the brother who shared that after his he sang he did his prayer of praise this morning and praise is an altar he made his prayer of praise this morning what you are what you are doing when you make the prayer of praise you are raising up an altar in your home or wherever you are you are raising up an altar that brother raised up an altar and when he went back to sleep god started ministering to him because the altar is a place of divine communication the altar is also a place where promises are made at the altar god makes promises to human beings the altar is a place of power and authority a place of power and authority the altar is also a place where human beings draw strength from god where human beings draw strength because from the altar we receive the food of angels the bible calls it the food of angels we receive this food of angels and saint augustine says this saint augustine says when you eat ordinary food normal food it digests and becomes part of you he says but when you eat this food this food does not become part of you instead you become what you receive because what you are receiving is who is jesus so instead of jesus becoming part of you you become part of jesus so when you receive him and you're now part of jesus and every day you are receiving him and every day you are being part of jesus when you are walking down the street and demons see you coming who do they see that is why as a catholic christian if you really know your scripture if you know your theology and if you know who you are as a child of god and as a partaker of the food of this altar it is not you who should be afraid of demons demons should be very scared of you because you are a mobile weapon of mass destruction when you partake of this altar what you receive from this altar is greater than electric current is greater than atomic energy is greater than nuclear energy 
I refer to it as you are carrying intercontinental spiritual ballistic missile. That's what you are carrying. That's what you are carrying inside you. So when you go to places where they say, eh, they say this place, any person that moves into this compound, eh, which is a wizard, doesn't allow the person to progress. And then you start running around, you are afraid. Oh, Satan knows you don't know your right. And if you are, if you are somebody who doesn't know your right, somebody will hit your car and come out of the car and query you and put the fault on your head, make you feel guilty. You will start begging the person. You go and fix the person's car and fix your car. So when you, when you move into a neighborhood and they say this particular area, Demons don't allow people to operate. Demons oppress people. They steal people's wealth. And you start running from what? Hey, come and pray for me. I hear that this area I moved to. Oh, it's very bad. It's very this. It's very... Oh, Satan knows. Oh, this one doesn't know his right. Come on. Let's move in on this person. They move in on you. They start stealing what belongs to you. And you start crying. Whereas it is you who should be standing on the word of God. That says, wherever you step the soles of your feet, I give to you as an inheritance. Whereas it should be you, oh, who should be standing on the word of God that says, occupy till I return. Whereas it should be you who should be standing on the word of God that says, in my name, you will cast out demons. Whereas it should be you who should be operating on the word of God that says, I have given you power to trample underfoot serpents and scorpions and all the hosts of the enemy's power and nothing shall by any means harm you. Whereas it should be you who should be standing in the power of scripture that says thanks be to God who has given us the victory in Christ Jesus. Whereas it should be you who should be standing on the power of the world that says in all of these things we are more than conquerors. Whereas it should be you who should be standing on the power of the word of God that says for greater is he who is in you than the one. Many believers don't have a clue as to their authority. I preached a message some time ago. It is titled, The Believer's Authority. Believer's Authority. The altar is a place of holiness. It's a place of holiness. Because at the altar, you encounter the triple holy God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's a place of encounter with holiness. And when you encounter this holiness, you become like Moses. Every time Moses went into the tabernacle of meeting, where an altar was set up, Moses will fellowship with the Lord. And the Bible says by the time Moses comes out of that tent of meeting, his face will be radiating the glory of God, such that even his fellow human beings were running away from him. Do you know that any time you come to this altar, any time you come to this altar, hi, yeah, yeah, by the time you leave, you are carrying the radiance of the Almighty. That is why you should never miss an opportunity of coming to God's altar. Never miss an opportunity. Now the flip side of all of this is that as you have godly altars, you also have ungodly altars. You also have unrighteous altars. Just as godly altars are a place of worship between God, between human beings and the almighty God, ungodly altars or evil altars are places of worship between human beings and evil spirits, deities, demons, and Satan himself. They are places of worship. They are 
Evil altars are meeting places between human beings and evil spirits. Evil altars are also a gateway into the spiritual realm. They are also a place where evil spirits reveal themselves to human beings. They are also a place where covenants are made. They are also a place where human beings derive evil powers from evil spirits. They are also a place where unholiness people encounter evil. Evil. Just as people are filled with the light of God at the, ho at the godly altar, people are filled with darkness at an unholy altar. That is why native doctors can never they are specialists in evil. If you go to a native doctor to say, I want a charm to kill this person. Native doctor will not ask you, what did the person do you? He will not ask you. He does not care who is in the right or who is in the wrong. Because there is no light in them. There is no truth in them. What is in them is evil. Just as the one who is in the light takes joy, takes delight in sharing the light with others, they find happiness in doing evil. That is why even William Shakespeare says, to the witch, what is fair is foul, and what is foul is fair. What is good is bad for them. And what is bad is good for them. Why? Because they are filled with darkness. Evil altars. Now, there are different types of altars. Number one, you can have a personal altar. Personal altar. The personal altar is the altar of your heart. You can make your heart an altar for God. Why? Because Paul wrote to the to the Corinthians in Second Corinthians chapter six, verse sixteen. Saint Paul says, "We are the temples of the living God. We are the temples of the living God. So if we are temples of the living God, and every temple has an altar." then your heart is the altar of God. You can make your heart an altar. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, St. Paul says, Don't you know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit? So your body, your body, your life is supposed to be an altar to God. A place, your heart is supposed to be a place of communion with God. Your heart is supposed to be a place of encounter with God. A place of holiness. The human heart. The human heart. So you can have personal altar. Then you can also have family altar. Family altar. Remember how Joshua said, As for me and my house will we serve the Lord. You can have an altar in your home. You can have an altar in your home. And I love that about members of the Association of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and Immaculate Heart of Mary. How many people have altars in their homes? God bless you. If you don't have an altar in your home, at the end of this retreat, you are going to buy the things and set up an altar in your home but the best thing to do is join that association of the sacred heart of jesus and immaculate heart of mary it's one of the greatest gifts of god to us i tell you something about that altar there was this young man who was working in an oil company his father died young so for him he had responsibility for his siblings 
And he was making sure that his siblings had very good education and everybody is able to stand on their own. Their father had a land that he didn't build on before he died. So he decided that after the brothers, the siblings have finished with school and they are married and settled, all of them together are going to pull resources together and they will build something for, to the memory of their father on that piece of land. And then their uncle started a fight with them. He wanted that land. The young man said, you can't do that to us. This is the only thing our late father left for us. And we want to keep it in memory of him. They had this serious argument and some members of the family were supporting the uncle. Some others were supporting the children. And the uncle said to him, that because you get money, nobody they catch you so. We will see what will happen to you. So the uncle went to a native doctor and got a native doctor to come and he said, I don't want you to just kill him. I want you to cripple him financially. I want you to deal with him and his family, his wife, his children. This money that is making him feel proud, let him waste everything and then you can finish him off. Gave the native doctor money. The native doctor decided, well, he's going to start with a young man. He's going to shoot native bullets into him. But every time he tried to do it, the thing will not work. So one day he traced him to his house. He got to know the place. At night he came back. To, he saw the wife and the children of the man. They were playing inside. So, Alright, since I cannot get the man, let me go after the wife and the children. For him to release those native bullets into the wife and the children, the same place he came to in the afternoon, when he came back at night, there was a man standing at the door, backing him with his hands up like that on the lintel of the door, the frame of the door. That was how the man was standing. He thought it was somebody speaking to the wife inside the house. But the person needed to come out. He waited for one hour. One and a half hours. Which kind of person be this one when they come out for road? Are thy word, O oh Lord, is a program designed to enable you study the Bible. It teaches the scripture and leads you to deeper understanding of contemporary events in the light of Christian faith. Are thy word, O oh Lord, is designed for people of Catholic faith and Christians who seek true studies and interpretation of sacred scripture. Are thy word, O oh Lord, an initiative of Reverend Monsignor Dr. Pius Key, holds monthly at Holy Rosary Chaplaincy, Yumi Bekwe, Pat Hakot. Be a part of this great opportunity to share the word of God.